I'm Angela McKinney with the Indiana IEP Resource Center here at our Summer Institute with Sarah Ward, co-director of Cognitive Connections. Welcome, Sarah, and thanks for coming. Thank you. It's so fantastic to be here. It's been great. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience working with the Summer Institute? Sure. Um, well, first of all, I've met so many really wonderful people who've um, attended the presentation, and I've been really impressed by the quality of questions and how interested they are, and they're always sort of looking for what they can do to take it to the next level of implementation. Um, and I've been really impressed by your organization. Um, what I think has really struck me is how much you work at three different levels. I really heard last night from so many individuals how you work at the community level where you're right there in with the teachers and really working with administrators and showing best practices for education. And then I was really, um, really impressed by how much you looked at working with individuals and families on really understanding what is the IEP process, what are your rights, and you know, how do you implement an IEP effectively so that students are really getting the goals that they need to achieve and um, clearly working with families to understand how do we write those goals and make them achievable and have students be able to really make measurable progress. And then I was also really struck by how terrific of a job you provide professional education for teachers and teachers getting this opportunity to um, learn sort of best practices that are out there, kind of what are the different ways of implementing strategies and tools. So I really saw that you just so comprehensively with a big picture down to sort of the smallest details um, implement the educational process. It's been really impressive. Thank you. Yeah. And we've learned a lot about executive functioning yesterday and we're <laughs> anxious to learn more today. Um, can you tell me why it's important for all educators to have a good understanding of executive functioning? Sure. So I think in education where we focus on reading and writing and math and all of those mm -hmm. basic science and history, et cetera, that executive function is equally one of those skills that we just need to have um, all people in general utilize every single day. So it's really the skill that gives you the ability to um, know what your plan and what your goal is and to really see into the future what it is that you want to accomplish and then figure out, hmm, what is it that I'm going to do to actually achieve that goal and then how do I initiate that goal and carry it out and self-monitor that it's going okay, that I sort of achieved um, goal versus actual. And I think the thing about that is, is that that starts at the very early age of preschool where we just start with even play and with play we're imagining the goal is, well, I have a block, but my goal is that it's a fire truck. So I figure out how do I need to act and interact with that block to make it be a fire truck and to be a fire truck scene and for me to take on the role of, say, being a fireman. As you emerge into the elementary ages, all teachers need to be teaching this to kids because in the elementary age, it's now being able to plan within the classroom. So if the teacher gives you an assignment, you now have to be able to say, okay, well, what's my plan to move through the classroom to obtain the items that I need and to sit down and how do I know what the assignment is and that I'm working my way through it. And then as you get older and you hit sort of that um, middle and high school, you have to hold on to that plan over farther, farther space and time. So now it's no longer be in the classroom, but I'm at my locker and I have to think about, hmm, what is it that I need when I go down the hall, up the stairs into my other classroom? And I have to remember to turn in my homework and make sure that I have the items for that class. Maybe it's goggles for my science experiment or my lab journal for, you know, recording the data in from the experiment in. And then you even have to hold on to that sort of future image even farther across time. So it's being able to be at school and say, all right, well, now I'm going to go home this afternoon and I'm going to be home in three hours and I have to remember what is that homework? If I'm at home, what materials do I see that I have with me that I'll need? So that eventually, as you get older and older and you become employed and go through college, et cetera, now it's holding on to, all right, well, what is the project that I'm working on? When is the due date? How am I responsible for managing the materials and carrying out and completing it? So it's just a universal skill that we all have to do, and it grows and changes with age. So it's important that educators are addressing it from as young as preschool all the way through high school. Um, and I think that's a big question I get. I think a lot of people will say, well, executive function, isn't that just sort of, you know, recording your homework and organizing your backpack? We don't have to worry about that until middle school, or we don't have to worry about that because they're not doing that for projects until high school. But it's just a skill that starts at a very young age where we really have to teach kids how to improve their working memory and 
to hold on to their goal and carry it out over time. And it affects everything, every other academic skill. and Absolutely. I mean, it requires attention and working memory, and so you need to do it for reading comprehension. You have to hold on to what is the goal of the character and being able to even sort of say, okay, let me visualize the steps that the character is going to go through to hopefully achieve the goal or solve the conflict inherent to the book. Um, if you're looking at a skill for history and science where you have an exam, you know, same thing, you have to understand, all right, well, my exam is two weeks from now. Um, if I don't procrastinate, how is it that I'm going to plan my time to study? Um, what methods am I going to use to study? What works for me? And then as you're going through that process, to even be able to evaluate and say, how's my study plan going? Am I you know, studying as many terms as I need to? Do I have all the materials? And time management is a huge component of this because we need to be able to see time visually um, and many of our students are growing up in a digital world. So you're in the kitchen, you look at the microwave, it tells you what time it is. If you're in the living room, you look at the cable box, it's digital. But we really understand time best by an analog clock. So being able to visualize, you know, say for example, not just that I have dot dot 10 minutes, but I have 10 minutes to complete something, and seeing that sort of pie of time allows you to see the amount of time and to even at the midpoint self-monitor and evaluate well, I was supposed to be getting 10 division problems done, and I've really only gotten four division problems done at this midpoint in time. Why is that? You know, what are sort of the things that are getting in my way? Um, are they distractions? Is it that the work is more difficult and I need to contact a teacher and get some support? So it works at the level of self-advocacy. It works at the level of self-monitoring and really gets kids to understand and to internally feel that time is passing and to regulate their actions within that allotted time frame. So it's tough stuff. Yes. Well, thank you so much, and we look forward to having you back in Indiana in the future. Well, thanks for the invitation, and continue doing all the great work that you do to support the community and teachers.